What's going on everybody? It's episode 99. So cool that you made it this far. This video we're going to just focus a bit more on typing. So we created an orders page, but we've kind of been ignoring types, doing the bare minimum or using any. Now I want to focus on that a little bit more and introduce a new concept, which is extending, which is basically a way to inherit different properties on another type. So now you can have a base type and a new type. So I'll show you how to do that and how that makes sense on our orders page. So let's jump into the code, but first, if you want to support this channel, do me a solid and check out the sponsor of this video. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So right now we have props any, and we have get static props, which is actually typed here, but we're not saying what should be returned and what's being received down here. So let's go through here and add some typing wherever we can. Even here we have any. I want to avoid that when possible. And for our parameter of the for each, for the customer and for the order, we're not typing those. So let's start with the basics. We can say what type we are expecting here in our page by using a generic inside of this next page type and we can define what type we're looking for. You could do it in line here defining it inside of these curly braces but I'm actually just going to use a external type we'll call it props and then you no longer have to type this here. So let's go ahead and define props. I will do that right here. So we'll say type props and this is going to expect orders, which is going to be an array of type order. Now you can go ahead and import this order, which we defined somewhere before. So if you peek at the definition, this is what that type looks like. However, this is not going to quite get us there because the structure we're defining down here is quite different than the order up here. Basically, you can think about it as the order we're defining in each row this data right here is very similar to an order type we've defined. It's just a little bit different. You know, we have a couple of extra properties and things are more structured specific to this page. So this is where we can extend a type. And the way we actually do this is to create first an interface, which is very similar to a type. You can look up the differences if you wish. And this is going to be an order row. So we're basically creating a custom type or an interface that's specific to this page. But it's going to be very similar to another type, so we'll say extends order. And the way you define an interface is very similar, you're just not going to use an equals here, you'll just use curly braces. And now by default, every single order row is going to have the same properties that are defined on an order. So a description, a price, and an underscore ID. However, we can modify this type because we're also going to want the customer name here to find us customer and the customer ID. And we want price to be available directly instead of in this weird nesting here. So this is an interesting thing because now we have this name conflict. So here we have price defined as a number and here we have price defined as an object with a property number decimal on it. These are not the same thing, and you're not going to be able to just overwrite the price. So if we went ahead and said price was of type number, we're going to get a problem because it's going to say interface order row incorrectly extends interface order. Types of property price are incompatible. So as we have our code now, we're basically overwriting that original price. And if we had TypeScript from the beginning, we may have noticed that earlier and potentially reduce the chances of future issues or bugs. In our situation, we didn't run into any problems, but there could be the case that you're overwriting something without even realizing, because you would expect an order to have that original price data, but we are converting it to some other structure. So what we'll do is we'll just rename this property so we can actually keep both of those properties. I know they store the same information, but it's good not to overwrite that original structure and then this extending will actually work. So we'll say order price. Cool, so far so good. Now the other things we're going to need are customer, which is going to be a string. And again, this might actually be better named customer name, and then we will have customer ID, which is going to be of object ID, which we'll need imported. 
from MongoDB. And then the ID is going to be an object ID. So far so good, but we did rename all of this, which is just going to break our web page. So now when we display this data, well, for one, it's just not working. So let me restart our server. We'll stop and restart. Doing a refresh now, you can see some breaking changes. So specifically the price is messed up. Everything else appears to be good. So what we will need to do is we'll need to go up to the columns here and price is now going to be order price. Now the reason the customer is still working is because this is not actually typed to this interface yet. So it's not realizing that we are assigning to customer instead of customer name. So what we could do is say these orders should be of type order row array. And now we're going to get that problem show up saying that the customer, actually I have another problem here and we can just make the customer ID optional here. Since that's how it's defined on the original customer type, it could have a value or be undefined. And you can see that here over here in the customer type. Okay, so that was a, an unrelated problem, but now customer is going to complain because we have a conflict of types here. So let's go ahead and change this to customer name. Aha, there we go. So now that we've added that typing, we were able to catch that problem. And now we should get a blank value. So let's go ahead and update the columns to customer name. Cool, and now we have a value. The other typing we can introduce is for these parameters. So customer, subtype customer, and order is of type order. And we'll just need to import this type Good. And lastly, we can say that the type we are trying to return is props and then say, as an example, we removed this property here. You can see that property orders is missing in this empty object type. So that's going to make sure we return the correct thing. So if we go back, refactor our code and end up returning something other than a list of order rows, TypeScript's going to freak the crap out and it's not going to let us do that. So it's a little type safety there. Now let's talk about the actual page. So first thing we'll say, hey, this is expecting props here, which will allow us to make sure we grab the right thing. So we can say props dot and see that the only available option in this case is orders. So that'll just make sure you are a bit more careful and end up typing the correct thing. That's all I got in this video. Hopefully that was fun, you know, getting some more practice with types. If you have any good ideas, suggestions on how to make this even better, drop them in the comment section down below. Be sure to slap the subscribe button and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. The next episode is kind of a big deal, so definitely make sure you check it out. Thank you.